members of the command staff, ladies and gentlemen, fellow trainees, good afternoon. We gather here today to pay respects to Trooper George Hanna. 33 years ago, on this day, the 26th of February, Trooper Hanna was killed in the line of duty while searching three suspects on the side of the road of routes 12 and 20 in Auburn. Today, we here in the 82nd Recruit Training Troop welcome Trooper Hanna's daughter, Deborah Hanna Kearney, and her son, Cameron, as we pause for a moment to look back on a trooper who's been vastly remembered. Take a moment of silence with me. As I read through the articles of Trooper Hanna, I was amazed at the many different ways he's been remembered over the years. A simple Google search of his name results in literally over hundreds of articles on the internet, which is pretty impressive considering the World Wide Web didn't even exist until 1991. That was eight years after he had passed. Since then, many things have been named in his honor. Routes 12 and 20 were named in his honor, as was I-290, a bridge in Natick, and of course the infamous Hannah Hill, which has broken many trainees over the years. In addition to this, the George L. Hanna Awards each year present a Medal of Valor. This award is the highest award for bravery a police officer can receive in the Commonwealth. I think it was best said by Lieutenant Colonel John Jack Cunningham during the 2013 bridge rededication when he said, George Hanna is a shining example of what was and what should always be held up as a standard for police officers in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. People just don't get remembered the way he has, so I think it goes without saying what kind of man he was. Remembering him has become a tradition, and the 82nd is proud and honored to become a part of that tradition. I think it's also very important. I know that I spoke to half of the class um, 
so bear with me if I've repeated anything. Um, it's very important for you to understand what happened that day. Uh, my father wasn't supposed to work that day. He got a call to see if he could come in and, and work somebody else's shift. So I was the only one home. My mother and my, my other two siblings were um, they were out, so my father said, I'll call you right back. He got off the phone. He said, do you mind staying by yourself? And I said, I'm, I'm fine, Dad. You can go to work. He said, we could need the extra money. So he went to work. I, I remember um, following him out to his car, giving him a hug, and watching him drive up the street. And then uh, he went on his way. Uh, he worked Route 20 and Route 12. He did a routine traffic stop of a suspicious vehicle, pulled that vehicle over. Uh, there were five occupants in that vehicle. Um, he did not understand uh, street Spanish. Uh, they were talking street Spanish in the vehicle. Um, so he asked them to get out of the vehicle. Well, they were talking street Spanish. One said to the other one that uh, he was going to notice the guns in the back seat. So when they got out of the car, they shot my father seven times. Um, from there, they went over to him, took his service revolver, and then they left in their vehicle. Um, a guy, a three guys drove up in a truck. One got out to help my father because my father proceeded to drag himself to the car because they didn't have these things that you guys have today. The only method of communication was in that vehicle. Uh, so one guy got out to help my father. The other two proceeded to follow that vehicle into a uh, section of Worcester that is the village or something like that. Um, later on, they were able to, because of those two guys, be able to find those three guys that killed my father because they had his service weapon and uh, they flushed his, the, the casings down the toilet. Meanwhile, while all this was going on, uh, myself, my, my brother and my sister and my mother were at home. We got a call from our, my uncle who lived down the street and called my mother and said, hey, uh, let me speak to Georgie. And she's like, oh, he went to work. And he's like, oh, I thought it was his day off. And she's like, no, he, he went in to fill in. So um, she said, he said, call Holden, call his barracks and have him call me because I heard a, a trooper got shot. So my mother got off the phone, called Holden, and in the meantime, while she was waiting for uh, them to come back on the phone, a trooper arrived at my door and whisked my mother away and, and told the neighbor, don't let the kids turn on the, the news. Um, my father made it to the hospital. Uh, it was important for him to speak to two people, my mother and he wanted to see a priest. He got to the hospital, he was able to see that priest um, so he could, he could have last rites. He did not make it for my mother to get there. Um, so I'm standing here today because any traffic stop that you encounter, that could happen to you and your family. So if I if I can put that thought in your mind to be extra cautious every time that you stand up to that, go up to that vehicle, even though you think it's nothing, it, it could be something. Um, if all the tools that you've learned here at the academy and all of these uh, uniformed people, the command staff, the DIs, the curriculum, curriculum unit, anybody that you've come in, in contact here at the State Police Academy, has given you those tools to be able to survive out there. They're here to help you guys. So please remember that you can always go to them for help. You guys are all a family. This is the beginning of your family. You'll always be my family. So I just want to keep you guys safe. Okay? And thank you so much. I, I very much appreciate it. This is my first time up at the Academy, and, I, and I'm so thankful for the command staff letting me be as much a part of your, your journey here. Um, so 
so I can't thank you guys enough to, to let me be here. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you, man.